Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And I'm back with the Lockdown Longbow. So my longbow simulator that shoots medieval weight arrows at the right speed for a heavyweight English longbow. It allows me to do all sorts of tests and answer burning questions. Like here's one. If you're an escaped prisoner in 1410 on the castle battlements, can you jump into the moat, swim away and not get shot by the longbowman? You know, because what does happen when you shoot arrows through water? Well, the thing is, I am a lucky guy. I've got a very lovely and tolerant wife. I've got a lockdown longbow. I've got a YouTube channel to do this stuff on. And I've got a swimming pool. So let's go find out what happens to arrows underwater. Let's go shoot some stuff. I'm back on the range now with type nine bodkins. I swapped them out from the sevens, the needle bodkins. I think these might be less likely to go through that plywood stack behind me. And I have a lovely wife, but there are limits to how lovely she is. And I think a hole through her swimming pool is gonna test her. So we're gonna shoot now and see at four and a half meters, same distance I'm gonna shoot into the pool from, how these perform in, on those boards in the dry, and then we're gonna do it underwater and see how they perform underwater. The distance that they will be traveling through the water is about two and a half meters, to give you an idea. Right, let's go. Quite a bit of kick up on that. That's interesting. I haven't really noticed that before. A little bit on the slow-mo, but I didn't realize quite so nasty actually. Straightens shortly, but at four and a half meters, not so good. Right, so here we go. They've all done exactly the same, which is 18 centimeters, because they've gone through the front board, the second board with the gap, and they've just poked out the back of the 18 mil board at the back, and that's where they've stopped. And I'm not gonna kill my pool, which is very good news. So now what we've got to do is take this stack up to the swim pool, drop it in, shoot it, find out what happens. Will the guy live? Will he die? Who knows? Here we are down at the range. A little bit different to normal. It's a swimming pool. This is going to allow us to shoot through a couple of meters of water and just see if there's any energy left in these arrows after doing that. Is it going to do anything? Are they just going to float? Who knows? Let's shoot something. First one's in, and that is certainly in. There is no doubt about that. So this time I'm gonna go for a lower, longer shot, getting a bit braver, because the swim pool still seems to be in one piece. You can't see from that angle, but I'll bring the camera around in a moment. But I can tell you, looking at this, that it is definitely taken a lot of the sting out of these shots. Here are our three boards coming in, fat one at the back. It's a bit blurry, it's a bit difficult to get in the focus, but you can see none of them have even touched the backboard. So a lot of force has been taken out of them, but then one of them hasn't even penetrated the back of the second 12 mil, and they went through all of it before. So really, it's taken a lot out of these arrows. Looking at the back of the board now, this is the second one, not the third one. So this one, I don't think even touched the third board. That was well clear from it. And this little pimple down here is the third arrow, which didn't even make it through the second board. So it has really taken a great deal of energy out of this, but let's go and have a quick chat about it back at base. Back from the swimming pool with my very soggy looking arrows. So at least we now know what they look like if they've been underwater. At the start of the film, I said these would go through about two and a half meters of water. That wasn't the case actually. It's probably more like one and a half meters but it made a really dramatic difference to the way they went. So previously out in the open air, those arrows had punched through two 12 mil boards and all the way through, just peeking out the back of the 18 mil. This time, two of them certainly didn't even touch the 18 mil. One of them may have just touched it. One didn't even get through the second 12 mil. So it really did take an awful lot of energy out of it. Now, part of that might have been that the wood had soaked up some water, but I was, you know, conscious of that. So I was very quick about getting the boards in and then doing my shooting. They weren't there for hours. But really that's kind of our answer is that at a meter and a half, you're still gonna be in big trouble, obviously. But it is taking a lot of the velocity and therefore the energy out of the arrows travel very, very rapidly. So would you be safe at a meter and a half? Clearly not, but you are gonna be better off than on the surface. And it is gonna be worth those guys shooting at you down from the battlements, because they may well get you. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this film. It, on the surface, it seems like a really pointless thing, shooting arrows into water. But what it does, the whole purpose of these lockdown longbow films is to build a picture around bows of what they can and what they cannot do. 
And this is just part of fluffing out that picture and expanding our knowledge of this whole thing. So there's going to be some more in-depth ones, but there's also going to be little frivolous ones like this. It's fun. Let's just carry on doing it. Let's just shoot stuff. <laughs>